In today's video, I am going to give you my top 10 tips for European cruise. We'll discuss budget, flights, research, documentation, organization, banking, and packing. Budget. The first step in planning any trip is setting a budget. Determine how much you're willing to spend on your European cruise, including accommodations, food, activities, souvenirs. This will help you make informed decisions throughout the planning process and ensure you're not overspending. You'll need to take into account exchange rate and the cost of living in the countries you're visiting, especially your embarkation city. For instance, a hamburger in Ravenna, Italy is about 10 and a half euros, which is $11.29. But in Copenhagen, a hamburger is 169 Danish krones, which is about 22 and a half euros, which is $2.37. So you can see it's important to know where you're going. Two, choose your cruise line. With so many options available in Europe, it's important to research and choose the one that's right for you. Consider factors such as the cruise line's itinerary. Do you want to go to the Mediterranean, a Greek Isle, Scandinavia, or my personal favorite, a British Isles cruise? Other important factors are duration, onboard amenities, and budget. Read reviews and gather information to make an informed decision. Three, book flights, accommodations, and transfer. Once you've chosen your cruise, it's time to book your flight, hotels, and transfer. Look for the best deals and convenient options that align with your cruise itinerary. It's highly recommended to arrive at your departure city a day or two in advance to avoid any last minute travel complications. If you're traveling from another continent, I recommend no less than two days, preferably more. It's also important to note that some of the most popular cruise embarkation ports are a good distance away from the nearest major airport. For instance, Southampton is 63 miles away from London's Heathrow and Ravenna is 91 miles from Venice. A great website and app to learn how to get from your airport to your cruise port is Rome to Rio. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Step four, join a Facebook group for your cruise. Joining a Facebook group dedicated to your specific cruise can be incredibly helpful. It's a great way to connect with your fellow cruisers, share tips and advice, and get insider information about the ports you'll be visiting. Plus, it's a fantastic opportunity to make new friends who share your excitement for the trip. On one of our upcoming cruises, we are going to share a private excursion to Athens with a couple we met through a Facebook group. And I still keep in touch after several years with our Baltic Cruise Facebook group. Step five, check your passports and visas. Ensure that your passport is valid for at least six months beyond your departure date. Additionally, research the visa requirements for the countries you'll be visiting during your cruise. This is usually on the cruise line's website, but you can also go to your country's website. I'll link a few below. It's essential to stay informed and apply for visas in advance if necessary. If you are from the U.S., you may also want to consider getting global entry. It will give you TSA pre-check plus expedited customs on your way home. Six, book travel insurance. Don't underestimate the importance of travel insurance. It's crucial to protect yourself financially in case of unforeseen circumstances or emergencies during your trip. We had a neighbor who was in her 40s at the time and had a stroke on a European cruise. She said it was financially devastating. I highly recommend booking travel insurance that covers medical expenses, trip cancellation, medical transportation, and lost baggage. And as a bonus, stay tuned until the end of this video to find out what I personally do for travel insurance. Step seven, research ports. Take the time to research the ports of call on your cruise itinerary. Learn the must-see attractions, local customs, and any safety precautions you should be aware of. I use several strategies for this. My first step is I asked ChatGPT. I have a full video on that and I'll link it below. I also check other YouTube videos as well as travel guides such as Rick Steve. This will help you make the most of your time ashore. Also, while aboard, you know, just take the time to experience where you are. Not every minute has to be booked. Our most enjoyable trip was to Florence. We had no plan. We just sat in a piazza and drank a glass of wine. It was so much fun. So let me know in the comments your favorite port and what you enjoyed about it. Step eight, organize everything at home. Before you embark on your European adventure, make sure to take care of any necessary arrangements at home. Pay your bills, inform your bank and credit card companies about your travel plans, and arrange for someone to take care of your pet plans or kids. If you are leaving for a long trip and no one is watching your house, you may want to turn off the water. Take it for someone who has had two floods. We are now firm believers in house sitters. This way you can relax, 
fully and enjoy your European vacation. You'll also want to make sure you have ample supply of any prescription medications. Step nine, banking and cell phones. It is essential to notify your bank to avoid any disruption to your credit cards or debit cards. Additionally, research your cell phone provider's international plan or consider purchasing a SIM card or an eSIM card to stay connected while you're abroad. Don't forget to check if your cruise ship offers Wi-Fi packages as well. Always make sure to turn your phone to airplane mode to avoid huge bills while on board. You'll also want to make sure your credit card does not charge a foreign transaction fee. Pack. Finally, the fun part. Make a checklist of essential items you'll need for your European cruise. Pack comfortable clothing, suitable for both onboard activities and shore excursions. I am a classic overpacker. I remember weighing my suitcase on one European cruise and it weighed 70 pounds. So to help prevent that, I have subscribed to the Travel Fashion Girl Facebook group. They promote capsule wardrobes and carry-on only. I am not sure I can go that far, but some important things to pack are your travel adapters, toiletries, medication, good walking shoes, a day bag or purse. I'll leave mine in the description box below and any necessary documents. Also, make two copies of all documents. One to leave at home in a safe place and one to take with you in case anything gets lost or stolen. Let me know your European packing essentials below. But the most important thing to pack is a sense of adventure and a big smile too. As promised, here is a bonus tip for you. If you're a frequent traveler, and that is any travel over 100 miles away from home, consider investing in an annual travel insurance plan. It can save you both time and money in the long run, especially if you embark on multiple trips throughout the year. Check with your insurance provider for more information on this option. Now, I personally use Allianz annual policy. They have not sponsored me. They don't know I exist. And to be honest, I've never had to make a Claim. And there you have it, my top 10 tips for planning a European cruise. I hope you found these tips helpful and that they make your journey a memorable one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, and how about watching another video now? And as always, happy cruising!